Senator, good to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, your, your father was here yesterday, Senator, saying, you know, it's, it's a tough uh, kind of a, a corner that the Federal Reserve has backed us all into here. Uh, do you agree with that, that it has just created this bubble and now it's trying to find a way out? Yeah, and I would say in more general terms that I'm just sort of against price controls, whether they're on consumer goods or on money. And the fact that the Federal Reserve is so involved in, with determining what the interest rate is, inevitably it leads to uh, misallocation in the marketplace. You know, I think the whole real estate boom had to do with the Federal Reserve keeping interest rates below market, but also quantitative easing and control of the interest rates I think has led to the stock market boom. So I think there will be a correction. It's always been to my to my mind, a question of that it's taken this long for the marketplace to decide that, you know, as quantitative easing gets less of an easing, that uh, there will be a correction. I think that's where we are now. Do you think, um, Senator, if we uh, do not see the Federal Reserve raise rates tomorrow, it would be because the president made it very clear that that would be a big mistake? And is there a danger in that? I think they're just worried about us having a good Christmas, frankly, Neil, and they don't want to hurt the stock market anymore right before <laughs> Christmas when we're, we're trying to have Christmas cheer around here. So, no, I don't know if they are that influenced by, you know, their positions are long-term positions. People worry about the political arm, the president, Congress beating up on the Fed. I think they're fairly independent. I can't imagine, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Fed right. or their policy or that they control so much of our economy. And yet, I do think that uh, they actually don't respond to us as much as uh, we could. I think we could have more influence. Like, you know, the whole idea of us auditing them, they're sort of afraid that we would somehow have oversight over the Fed. Well, my goodness, for my goodness, that would be a great idea to have more oversight of the Fed, but it'd be even better if the Fed weren't so involved and weren't so powerful, actually. Uh, you don't mind switching gears, sir, and what concerns this idea of a government shutdown maybe as soon as Friday, and this view that the, the two parties can't find some common ground here, yet we see on criminal right. justice reform, they can, you can. Um, you've led that effort, so it's possible, right? Well, you know, people worry about the government shutting down, and I can understand that, but they should also worry about keeping the government open. I mean, if you keep a government open that borrows a trillion dollars a year, are there problems to that? Is there an ultimate underpinning, you know, that is eroding away for the whole country when we accumulate a $22 trillion debt, when we borrow more than a million and a half dollars a minute? So I think both, both are a problem. We shouldn't willy-nilly shut the government down, but we also shouldn't just keep it open and keep spending money like there's no tomorrow. A lot of people fear that even a partial shutdown uh, could be a problem. You don't seem to think that's a big deal? No, I think uh, shutdowns are more hype than reality. I think the thing that should upset the American people is that it actually costs more to shut it down because we always pay the people for not working. So they'll declare 80% of the people up here unessential, meaning they don't have to show up for work, but we always pay them. I don't understand that. They're unessential. We <laughs> keep paying them and we keep them employed. I'm for if you're unessential, maybe that's an argument for making government smaller. Yeah, it must be hurt a lot if someone tells you you're unessential, you don't have to come in. But that's another <laughs> issue. Let, let me get your take on, on uh, you know, I know you don't like to wade into these Mueller matters, but, the, you know, we, 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 we had the Michael Flynn situation where sentencing was delayed and a, an idea that it hangs as noise for the markets, that this isn't resolved, that it could drag on a while. Regardless of what you think of the Mueller probe, are you worried this drags on and on and on? Yeah, and I think, you know, the interesting thing about the Mueller probe and about with General Flynn in particular is I've always been a critic of the idea that you can listen to someone's phone call without a warrant. That's what they did to General Flynn. I think it basically was entrapment. I think what they did should be illegal if it isn't already illegal what they did to him. But then on the other issue, the other issue to me is a little unseemly, the idea of people uh, lobbying for foreign governments. In fact, I'm toying with the idea and contemplating and in discussions of whether or not we should just make a law that you can't do lobbying for foreign governments because it really does appear to be divided loyalty, whether you're in government or not. I don't like the idea that Saudi Arabia spends tens of millions of dollars every year hiring people for their interests. Their, their ambassador should come to our capital and tell us what the interests of Saudi Arabia are. But we shouldn't have people, think about Ukraine. You got pro-Western Ukraine, pro-Russian Ukraine. Yeah. Should they all hire million dollar lobbyists to come over here and talk to us? No, I think that's unseemly and a lot of uh, people could potentially be hired that aren't working in our country. So real quickly, though, General, it's or Senator, it's clear the General did lie, though. 
Well, the thing is, he, he lied about something that the government shouldn't have even been listening to the phone calls. Right. The original FBI said, you know, they didn't even think he was lying. So, no, I, I think it's a terrible idea that okay. you let the government listen to all our, our phone conversations, and then they try to trip you up on whether or not you remember your conversation correctly yet on the phone. So I think what they did to General Finn in talking to the ambassador was all terrible right. entrapment and shouldn't happen. We shall see. Many legal minds disagree with that. We'll have a lot more after this.